All right, if you don't know who I am, I'm Jess, and I will be sharing today. And you're going to be a little different. We're going to do the message first, and then worship with music. So I hope that's all right. Um, and I will go ahead and pray to open. <clears throat> So Jesus, we just welcome you. And just on the way here today, I had that realization that this, I mean, I, I know this, but was reminded of the realization that um, I can't do this without you. And this message is just as much for me as it is for anyone else in the room. And so I declare that, Lord, I declare I need you. Amen. Lord, I want you. So I thank you that you honor that, even though I don't deserve it, your presence. Mm. I thank you that you're ready to come, even before I ask. And you know what I need before I even could think to ask for it. down to it, Lord. We just want more of you. Mm -hmm. So this time is yours. Do with it as you will. <clears throat> um, and use me if you need to. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, and I am going digital here on some notes. I practiced a couple weeks ago, but I'm practicing, and I charged it, so I'm like, okay, the battery should be good. Uh, I know, I feel so young. Okay, and I wanted to be comfortable, so I'm kind of chilling up here with you, and in a minute, you'll have a chance to get comfortable also. Um, but we're going to go over some things first. Today, I'm going to share with you a spiritual discipline. So this is not a rhetorical question. What are spiritual disciplines? Like examples of them? Yes. What would be Prayer. Those? Prayer. Bible reading. Bible reading. Fasting. Fasting. Silence. 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 Practicing mm -hmm. quiet time. Silence. Where are we right now? Church. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. And so I'm going to share a discipline with you that is called imaginative contemplation. And it's a form of praying. And it was first put into practice publicly by St. Ignatius of Loyola, which is in Spain, in 1540. So this is nothing new. This is, might be new to you. It was new to me within the last year. Um, and I thought it was really cool. So it might be new to you. thought we would uh, try it and see how God speaks. And so one of the things I've realized definitely in the last 10 years, but even more so in the last three years, is that I don't necessarily need to learn more about Jesus. Does that make sense? So me having a bookshelf, and when I say bookshelf, I mean shelves, and then there's boxes in the basement of books about Jesus, or about Bible studies, or about whatever. They're all good, but they don't necessarily help me live like Jesus lived. So the difference there is living from your head and living from your heart. And so what I've been trying to practice the last three years is living from my heart. It's messy. It's kind of complicated sometimes. And I hardly ever get it right. But it is way more authentic, and I feel like I have way more integrity when I live my life that way. 
So to live my life that way well, I don't need to know about Jesus. I need to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. I need to know what he thinks about me. I need to know how he feels about me. I need to know how he thinks and feels about those I'm interacting with. Because I can preach to myself all I want that I need to love others. But until I experience that love for myself, I'm probably not going to have it for others. <clears throat> and so again, it's that distance between our head to our heart and learning to live um, from one more than the other. So that is what disciplines such as imaginative, imaginative um, contemplation position us to do. They position us to strengthen that ability to live from our hearts and to live with our relationship with Christ and not just what we know about him. So does that sound like something you want to try? Mm -hmm. All right, got some thumbs up. So first let's practice because it's like, okay, what is she going to have us do and what, how does that work? And I, mean, I think I can probably do it, but who knows? So this is what I like to remember that Jesus said in Matthew 18, I tell you the truth that unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So not to say that if you don't do this exercise, you're not going to heaven. Not at all what I'm saying. No. Hear what I'm not saying, but that's the mindset that will help us in these exercises. Like, imagine when you were in kindergarten, what did the te how did the teacher teach you? Did she give you a book to read? Mm -hmm. No, when you learned math, you got little cubes and you counted them out, and what was four plus four? Oh, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so it's kind of like that, it's just having that childlike mind. And so, um, when we practice, just kind of think like, well, how would a kid think? So, here's the practice. Imagine an apple. Close your eyes if you need to, if that helps you. So, what color is your apple? What shape is it? What condition is it? Where is it located? Is your apple in the store, on the tree, in the bushel basket? Does it have leaves attached to the stem? Okay, that's your imagination. You imagined an apple, right? So now what would happen if you surrendered that imagination, your imagination to the Lord, and invited him to speak to you through it. So think on that for a minute. What if I surrendered my imagination to the Lord and had him use it to teach me something or to tell me something? So let's practice that. Visualize your apple again. And ask the Lord, is there anything about your apple that he wants you to know? How are you like your apple? Does your apple represent a situation or dilemma you're facing in your life? Remember here to listen with your heart, not your head. Let your imagination speak to you. What are you aware of? How about this? How do you feel about your apple? That's contemplation. So now you've used imagination and you use contemplation to let God speak to you. Does anyone want to share anything about their apple? My apple has some worms in it. Mine did too. Wow. <laughs> no. I can only see half of my apple. Okay. I don't know about the back side. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. No, I'm just like floating in the void. 
When you're like, is it on a tree? I'm like, no, it's just like... It's just there. It's floating. It's floating in a circle like a black egg. Yeah. <laughs> just an apple. So. Just an apple. I do not allow myself to imagine anything else. <laughs> Was anyone like, I don't even see an apple? Oh. I will admit, like, what? An apple? I don't know. I can't do it. Some of you? Yeah. My 10 year old, <clears throat> like, this kind of stuff drives him crazy. He's very intellectual. He's a thinker. And so he's like, there's no apple. And he, he's upset. I'm like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. So if you had no apple, it's okay. Don't worry about it. This is just one way that we can practice hearing from God. Okay, so now you are invited to get comfortable, if you would like, for the next part of, the, of our time together. So I have blankets and pillows. <clears throat> I don't have enough for everyone, but if you want to, like, crash out against the wall, get on the floor, lay down, you can lay down on the chairs. We have enough room up here. <laughs> Wes is going to mess them all up. There's a couple more up there. Don't be shy. Um, yeah, you can dim the lights. That might help. Yeah, that's good. Uh -huh. See, this is my, I did bring mine too. There is a few more blankets and pillows over there. Anyone else? All right, St. Ignatius believed that God could speak to us just as clearly in our imagination as through our thoughts and our memories. In his spiritual exercises, he writes of contemplation as a very active way of engaging your feelings, emotions, and senses to place yourself in a scene from the Bible. Contemplation isn't about trying to place yourself in a historic setting, like dreaming you were back in the Middle Ages. It's about trying to encounter Jesus in a personal and unique way. Through contemplation, the Holy Spirit makes present the mystery of Christ found in a particular passage and helps you to explore things in a way you might not find possible just through reading the story in the text. The first time I read the passage from Matthew 14 of Jesus walking on the water, I'm sorry, the first time I read it, I'm going to read it twice to you, the first time I read the passage from Matthew 14 of Jesus walking on the water, just listen to the story and don't think too hard on it. I kind of think, I like to think of it as let the story <clears throat> float over you. And so you could kind of, it, um, you know, Pick images to like let them play out in front of you, or you can just let the words like scroll by. But just try to turn your head off and just listen to the story. And so I'll be reading from Matthew 14, Jesus walks on the water. And I'm going to read pretty slow. I'll try to read slow. I always think I'm slower than what I am. But um, so yeah, just relax and and listen. This is starting in um, verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land. Buffeted by the waves, because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they cried. 
and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to the water, come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. So kind of stay in that space that you're in. And I'll read the story again. This time, let the events of Jesus' life described in the passage be present to you right now. So visualize the event as if you were making a movie. Pay attention to the details, sights, sounds, tastes, smells, and how you feel during the event. Lose yourself in the story. Don't worry if your imagination is running too wild. We'll let Jesus rein you back in if he needs to. And at some point, when it feels right, place yourself in the scene and meet Jesus there. And I'll give you some prompts along the way. A little backstory on this is right before this, Jesus fed the 5,000. And after they had everything cleaned up and they had the 12 baskets left, disciples are ready to make Jesus the next king. And immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat. What does the shore look like? Can you hear the water? Can you taste the salt in the air? What does it smell like? What does it feel like to be passing through the crowd to get to the boat? What does it feel like to have Jesus push the boat out with him still on shore? If you already know who you are in the story, become connect with that person. Are you a disciple? Are you still on the shore? If you're in the boat, are you ro rowing? What does the oar feel like in your hand? Do you begin to see Jesus dismissing the crowd?
As Jesus dismissed the crowd, he then went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land. If you're in the boat, how does it feel to be in the middle of the lake? Buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. How tired are your arms if you're roaring, rowing against the roaring wind? You're rowing and you're not getting anywhere. The waves are crashing up on the boat. Even if you're just sitting in the boat, what does it feel like to have something against you? During the fourth watch of the night, so they've been on the boat for several hours, Jesus sees their struggle and goes out to them, walking on the lake. Can you picture that figure coming across the water? Can you connect with that fear? They were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Do you feel that in your gut? But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Do you feel that relief? It's Jesus. Jesus is here. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus answers, come. Then Peter got down out of the boat, <clears throat> walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. Are you Peter, or are you still in the boat? Either way, do you feel that amazement? But when Peter saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus doesn't skip a beat. Immediately, he reaches out his hand and catches him. You of little faith, he says. Why did you doubt? And then they climb back into the boat, the wind dies down, and those in the boat worship Jesus. Truly you are the Son of God, they say. One of the other uh, books of this in the Bible that tells the story says, and instantly they arrived at the other side of the lake. So take a minute, stay where you are, and see if Jesus has any invitation for you. If you weren't Peter, do you want to go out on the water? His invitation is come.
So Jesus, I thank you that you do invite us to join you. And I thank you that you see when we're buffeted against the wind or against situations or when we feel trapped in relationships or situations. <clears throat> that you see that and you walk, you defy all odds and, and laws of nature to come to us. And when we keep our eyes on you, Lord, we manage to stay afloat. I love that the wind did not die down until they got back in the boat. You call us out into the storm sometimes. But if we keep our eyes on you, you hold us steady. So strengthen our faith, Lord. Help us to conquer our fears and our doubts. Not in our own strength, but because you say, come. Because you say, take courage. Because you say, don't 